Hello, it's me again, and we're going to kick off our octahedron visit here uh, with, uh, well, something that looks like a familiar puzzle that we've seen. And you might think that I might have bought the same puzzle twice, but in reality, I didn't. You recall that this was the face turning octahedron um, right over here. Kind of looked a little bit like a combination between the diamond scube and also the master scube. So, uh, fun puzzle here. But then there's this guy. And if we have a face turning octahedron, we also have a corner turning octahedron. So that is the other variation of this. So I thought I would kick off octahedron um, tutorials with this guy. Um, now it looks almost like this, except it has slightly different colors. I had to sticker this myself. I tried to follow the same type of um, sticker quality or sticker configuration as this, although they had slightly different colors here. So. We're going to navigate our way through this one. Not a particularly complicated one, but certainly worthy of, uh, of investigating to see if that's something that you'd, you'd want to look at. Now, when looking at this, it looks like it's very much like a pyramid in terms of itself. It has the same kind of structure, same kind of function here. So the thinking is, well, why not solve this like a pyramid? And the answer is, you could. Uh, so we're going to try that out. We're going to try to solve it like that. But uh, there's actually another way that we can solve this too, which is interesting. Um, and that is looking at it as perhaps not exactly corner turner. This might actually be better looked at as also a face turner if we define what we mean by face. So when we look at it like these are the faces, these must be the corners that turn with that. What if we didn't do that? When you look at the structure of a pyramid, you could look at it as a corner turner, but at the bottom, which doesn't have this, it's like you're turning the face. So is it a face turner? Is it a corner turner? It's just a matter of perspective. But if we extend that perspective and say that, well, maybe it is like a face, but it has an extra layer, that would mean that maybe this is a face of uh, one layer, this is the face of another layer, a middle layer, and this is the third face. In other words, we can maybe look at it just like a 3x3 three three modification, applying exactly the same rules by saying that, um, that this is one face that has a center, this is kind of a stygial, eh, it doesn't really participate in the scramble too much, um, but maybe these over here are like extended centers beyond this, and these are edges. Which, um, and the reason why I say that is because they combine two centers here. Which means this is a cornerless 3x3. Three three. Maybe we can look at it exactly like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through the solve of both and then finish up with a solve that I think is probably the one that, um, that, I, that I like the best. So to scramble it, scrambles much like a pyraminx. Now, I didn't, when I went through the pyraminx and the pyramid puzzles. I didn't really go through the pyramid strategy too much. It's pretty simple. If there's a request to do that, I can. But it basically uses a, kind of a, t uh, a takeout and put in strategy, just like this. You see it down here, move it down, put it in, move it in. It's really as simple as that. You can almost accidentally solve a pyramid. So we're going to go ahead and scramble this just to kind of get it started. You can see that it scrambles much like a pyramid with just an extension down here. And actually, when you look at it, the reason why I can look at it as a 3x3 three three is that if you take the pyraminx and stretch out the bottom, you pretty much have what appears to be something like a 3x3. Three three. So we'll go ahead and continue the scramble and see where it takes us. Abracadabra. Okay, so part one of this, let's do this all pyraminx style. Uh, first step is I'm going to put these guys in. Again, it's vestigial in nature. It's like it, It's like the appendix. Didn't quite evolve out of it, but it's kind of fun to kind of get you in the mood to solve it. So just like with the pyraminx, what I do is I kind of put centers in. And we've seen all kinds of pyraminxes, master pyraminxes, royal pyraminxes, any kind. So we should be old hands at this by now. So we basically have the outline, the structure, the uh, skeletal form here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I can start off by picking uh, a pyraminx area here. There's this area and then there's this area. But here's my suggestion in terms of solving it. Uh, if I do one pyraminx here, then I'm going to end up with edges within this plane, which might make it a little bit difficult to solve. So I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. We'll start off with the first quote side. So here's a, 
yellow and orange, which comes over here. Literally, this is just a matter of placing and replacing. So I'm going to position it just under where I want it. Turn this down, move this in, turn this up. See? No problems. Um, here's the orange and red. I'm just going to position this here. Same thing. Position it down, put it in, bring it up. We're good. Another orange here. Yellow here, rather. There goes that color blindness again. Put it in and bring it up. So we have a side over here. Might as well put our centers back. So continuing with that strategy, we'll move to the red side here. Here's a red and pink, which needs to come here. So just move this down, out, and up. So this is a little more than just intuitive positioning. Put it in position. That's the thing about pyraminx, is it's really just raw um, intuition, which makes it kind of a fun puzzle to cut your teeth on, so to speak. Down, in, and up. So we've got these two sides. We'll continue on through. Let's see, here's a pink and orange, which belongs over here. So we just move this out. Now, because of all these other extra layers, unlike a pyraminx, I'm not in too much danger of taking these out as I'm putting my initial pyraminx in. So, move this up. And down, across, up. This has to move in. Let's move this back in here. If I end up knocking some out, that's okay. That's easy to put back in. So, move this in here. Okay. So, in, in. I think we might have knocked one of these out. It really doesn't matter whether it was the orange or the yellow. Let's just do the yellow one here since that's the easiest. So, down, across, and up. Okay. Now, here's my recommendation. These are all in, and we're just on the verge of solving this part of the pyraminx up here. My recommendation is to actually not do it that way, because if you do that, we have these three solved, and we're just going to end up with these corners. And it's going to be uh, kind of challenging, a little more difficult to position and reposition. So what I would recommend if you want to do it pyraminx style is solve three of the four sides, then move on down here and solve one of the other ones. So why don't we solve this green one, which is just below. So I'm going to do the one just below here. Might be a little easier. I won't be bumping into these guys. So we'll try to move the green one in without knocking this out. So turn, 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 and bring it back. If I did knock uh, the pink one out, which is what I did, I can easily just put that back in. Okay. So actually, we ended up solving the white side, which is okay. So these three are solved, and then we did one just below that. So what we have is we have just these three that need to be cycled in, and they're in a position where we could more easily do that. If they were all in the same plane, that might be a little more difficult. So this needs to come up here. These three just basically need to be cycled. Um, so we can fairly intuitively decide how we're going to do that. Actually, over here, turn this in where this is supposed to be, turn this up here, bring this up, and bring this in, and it's solved. So pyramid style, not too very difficult. The next thing that we can do is let's try it Rubik's Cube style. Let's actually do it like a 3x3, three three, and you can see which one you like best. So, scramble it again. Pocus, pocus. Okay, phase two, the Rubik's Cube phase. Again, we put these back in. All right, taking the time to do that. And we got it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to treat it like a mod. I'm going to treat it like a 3x3 three three modification, and I'm going to call this one of my sides. So let's go ahead and put in the first cross. Let's line up all of these other centers. And again, I'm defining this, these collectively as our center. So we'll just kind of line things up. I see my yellows are supposed to be here and here. We got this here 
and we got this here. Okay, so I'm gonna put in my cross, which is over here, and this is put in just like any other uh, edges. So I need the green and red. Green and red is over here. So move this out. Move it down here. All right now, there isn't much difference in the content of what we're doing here. So this is in, this one happens to be in. This is not lined up with the center here, so we just have to move this out until we can put it where it's supposed to be. So good, good, red and yellow. Again, we're pretending like this is a side over here. So red and yellow, right over here. Move this into position. Okay. And finally, yellow and gray right over here. So again, this is more just placing things intuitively. Put this in conjunction with the proper center and up. So you can see this is our cross right over here, 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 and here. Our cross basically being defined as um, our center with the edges in place to match the centers of the other layers. So right now, if we were to call this up, this is our up layer, up, F, R, L. This is our down layer, and this is our back layer over here. So let's see if this concept of three by three actually works. Once you get the cross, I then turn this upside down and do the middle layer which is this layer over here. This is an edges only layer that we, that we do. And the algorithm is exactly the same. We can line this up now if we want. So let's see, we've got the red and pink. Here's a red and pink. So this is gonna be exchanged down to here with the algorithm that's used by a standard three by three, which I assume you all know. But to go from the left down here, so U, R, U, I, R, I, U, F, I, U, I, F. I didn't do anything different than what you do with a normal three by three. So that's, that's that over there. How about here? Well, this is in, but it's not oriented correctly. Um, let's just knock that out. Bang, zoom, sorry to move too fast on that one. Um, okay, now this is gonna come down, but on the right side. So if this is our F face here, we've got U, I, um, L, U, L, I, U, F, U, I, F, I. So that put that in here. And lastly, this one moves in. This is white, not gray. This needs to come in here, so do we have a green and white over here? So these guys have to be exchanged. We'll just blast this one out. All right, now that we've done that, we put it where we want it. Right here, so this is gonna move down to here. Turn, 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 turn. It's almost like automatic. And now this one, blue and gray, this is gonna come down to here. From this perspective, this will roll down to here by that same Rubik's Cube algorithm. Okay, so we have this layer in here. Now, as you recall, I'm gonna solve this exactly like a mod, a modification, like a super cube, without corners and only edges, so let's orient the center correctly. Blue, orange, pink, and white. So now it's a matter of, of permuting our edges here. So let's make sure that they're all rotated correctly. This is obviously rotated correctly. How about this one? Pink and uh, so this is rotated correctly. How about this one? Blue and uh, white. This is rotated correctly. How about this one? This is. So we just happen to get it all rotated correctly. But what would happen if they weren't? Well, the algorithm is the same. This is what I mean by that. So let's say we were in this position. This is rotated correct. This is rotated correct. This is not, and this is not. So basically we have an L, that L formation over here. So hold it here with this as our front, and we go F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. If that's our L, then this must be our line. So I know just by faith that this is oriented correct. You can see it over here, so we do it again. F, R, U, 
RI, UI, FI, and we should be good. What we then do is we then rotate these around. We look for one that's incorrectly, that's placed correctly, not incorrectly, and that's this one. So this becomes our front layer here, and we do our familiar R, U, R, I, U, R, 2U, R, I, and it's solved, just like a 3x3. Three three. So the advantage of doing the pyramid style is it's a pyramid style, but you have to kind of be aware of which one's on the top to put in and which one on the bottom, and it can be a little cumbersome permuting some of these uh, uh, corners. Rubik's Cube is, is easy enough, but it does take a little longer because you've got to sort of slowly put things in and then you have the last edge to deal with. So my preference is to do a combination of both of those. And here's what I mean by that. So here's my preferred strategy, which uses a combination pyramids and a combination 3x3. Three three. Bazinga. Okay, I didn't put these out here just for the interest of time, but um, so what I'll, I'll do is start off pyramids, and I'm going to get uh, an entire pyramids side. So where's all my greens here? There's another green here. Bang, bang. Zoom. Just kind of putting in our centers here just for the purposes of orientation. And we're good. So let's put our greens in. And again, this is simple pyraminx style. I hope I'm not throwing people by not getting into details with this. Again, I'm happy to do that. But, well... I think you all know how. So green, here's the other green. Turn, turn, turn. Okay, green, let's go ahead and get the rest of our reds. Red and pink. Turn, turn. Other red. All right. So good, good. Let's get our yellow. Didn't call it orange this time. I am learning. This comes over here, turn, 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 bring this up. Okay, now this time I'm going to complete my upper pyramid of this uh, octahedron. So where's my silver? Here's my silver. Turn, turn, turn. Now once I've done that, I simply shift to Rubik's Cube by putting in the last ledges. So I didn't have to take time doing top layer, cross, middle layer. Um, I do the pyramid, now I'm going to immediately switch to using these as the last layer of a 3x3. Three three. So now I shift a 3x3 three three strategy, which is right side up, which is upside down. That's right side up. This is upside down. This is right side up. Okay. So these two are right side up, so this is my L. So holding it here, F R U R I U I. FI, I know I've got a line here. I don't even have to check, so do it again. F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. So they're all in. None of these are oriented where they're supposed to be, so I just pick a random side here and go R, U, R, I, U, R, 2, U, R, I. You're going to find one in, so I'm going to hold it over here and do the algorithm till all these pop in. R, U, R, I, U, R, 2, U, R, I, and you're done. So, simple puzzle, but certainly a worthy collection, even if just to give this guy a little friend. But uh, that kind of helps kick off our, our um, octahedrons. And the fun thing about this is really these become, these are a good way of converting pyraminxes into, or pyramids, tetrahedrons, into 3x3 uh, three three mods. Unless they're face turning, in which case you correlate it with other types of puzzles. So, onwards to the next octahedrons and we'll take it from there. Thanks for watching.